are going to be live in a second and we are connecting on Instagram. Hello, Instagram friends. So good to see you. We are live and we're going to be live in a second on Facebook, on Hummingbird Academy today. I think we are live and let me just double check and see what is happening uh elaine are you here can i i'm here Jana. awesome it says it says live on facebook and we're live on Fa on instagram hello facebook hello instagram and welcome to my guest today but I i'm gonna i'm gonna talk about my guest and who she is she's an amazing phenomenal woman um in a second so let's officially start welcome everybody to dream big with jana inspiring you to reignite refire and refuel your life and this is the program where i interview uh different experts in different fields people who i personally know sometimes more sometimes less but today it's uh, my goal is to bring a ton of value to everybody who is listening and watching us or who will be joining us live or in 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 recording and really guys uh, uh, just to be upfront if you have any questions uh comment below the video uh in the questions might be around you being comfortable presenting on camera and off camera because today my guest on the show is the amazing Elaine Lang. Let me, Elaine, first of all, welcome to the show. Hello, Zana. Great to be here. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Thank you for uh, dedicating some time to speak to everybody who is listening and watching us right now. So let me, guys, for those of you who don't know who Elaine is, I'm going to give you a little bit of her official bio. And then, of course, as usual, I will add my own flavor to that. So Elaine Lan is a speaker and coach on applying improv techniques to improv communication, leadership, and team building. As an IT professional working at a Silicon Valley Fortune 500 company, she joined the Toastmasters Club found her voice and found the courage to take an improv theater class. Since then, she has studied improv with the Bay Area Improv Schools, Comedy Sports, Bats, and Made Up Theater. She is a distinguished Toastmaster and has co-founded three specialty Toastmasters clubs, including the Silicon Valley Improv Masters. She is a certified world-class speaking coach. And to be honest with you, I'm just like I promised, I want to add my own flavor to Elaine's character. First of all, she's an incredible human being. And since I'm also a Toastmaster um, member of three clubs, I belong to three clubs. The first one that I joined, I joined because of Elaine and its storytellers and Il because of her incredible smile and welcoming personality. And guess what? Uh, long story short, she became my mentor in the club. So thank you for doing and always guiding me. And your guidance is just absolutely uh, needed, appreciated, and I learn a lot from you. Mm -hmm. Dedication of your time and expertise that you openly share with me, Elaine, and not only me, but all the other members of the club is very highly appreciated. It's a rare gift. So thank you so much. And guys, today, the topic for today's, um, today's show is Visibility hacks for introverts, presentation tips to business professionals who think they can't. And why we chose that topic, Elaine, because apparently you, um, I know your story, but I would love for you to share your story with everybody. Uh, you were not a natural speaker. You were an introvert for a long time, right? Mm -hmm. Could you please share your story with us? Sure, Zana. Thank you. And thanks for that warm welcome. It's great to be here. And internet 
by the way, Zana became president of that club that she just talked about. So, you know, she's like the men's hair club. She liked it so much, she became the president. So congratulations, we just had that election. And I look forward to being in the club with you this year, President Zana. Um, <laughs> That's weird. You know, right? We, we grow into these things. And Zana's a leader. She has leaders on this, uh, she interviews leaders for her group here and um you can grow and learn to do things like speaking like leadership like improvisational theater it's a muscle and you learn to build it when you want to when you find the comfortable place where you feel you can grow the supportive place where you people surround you and help you and you persevere on reaching your goal. That's really the secret in a nutshell. We're, we're kind of done with the interview now. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Well, in, but just, just on the side note, I have so many questions that I'm going to bombard it. you. And thank <laughs> you so much. Some people are joining us. Thank you for watching us guys on uh, Instagram and uh, probably on Facebook, but I don't see any comments on, on Facebook just because of uh, my setup, but we'll definitely look at it um, right after the interview. So um, Elaine, question. And the question is, it's going to be a two-folded question. First, what really drives you in life? And another way I usually ask my guests, what is your, your big dream? It, it could be personal, professional, or if you're an entrepreneur, which you are uh, right now, it, just like me, uh, I usually, uh, there's no such thing as business and personal because it's all mixed together. So I would just say, what is your big dream? And the other question right after that would be, <clears throat> why did you get into speaking? Mm -hmm. Okay, well, which one should I start with? Big dream. Okay, big dream. My big dream is that one day we'll have an international group of introverts who are out there improvising and using improv skills to communicate with each other. We're seeing a lot of evil happening in the world right now. It's always been there, I realize this, but it's very visible right now. One key, I believe, to people like you and me, who are in the trenches, we have to live our everyday life with people who are out there disagreeing with us, coming at it from a different point of view, a different angle. So communication, I believe, is key to talking these things through. And instead of bringing a flamethrower to a conversation, what if we said, hmm, I hear that point of view, tell me more. What if we talked about things? And a key to good communication is the improvisational theater skills applied to life. And when I started taking improv, I didn't realize it could be a to life like that. I just did it because I wanted to be able to answer questions and not freeze like the deer in the headlights that I was so good at doing. That, that was what, why I joined improv school and started taking the classes. And then I realized how many benefits I was receiving from this ability to be in the moment and to listen and just be more comfortable in my environment, wherever it was, on stage, one-to-one, one-to-many. And that drives me forward to be able to educate or just share these skills with people and have them benefit from the same types of benefits that improv has that I have. And I believe this would lead to more and better communication. Did you, did you start doing improv, taking improv classes before you joined Toastmasters or was it the other way around? No, it was the other way around. Um, you know, as a kid, I took theater, right? We did play around with some theater classes, but due to an uh, experience I had at a speaking contest in high school, my introverted behavior style said, just keep your mouth shut. Just don't suffer that embarrassment or that those feelings again. And therefore I didn't really persevere and find my voice. 
until I was an adult, until it became so painful to me that I sought out Toastmasters. Well, actually, I changed jobs. Toastmasters found me and I said, wow, I can't I can't run, outrun this anymore. I it's it's right in front of me here. I have to say yes. And that's when I joined Toastmasters and overcame the fear of public speaking, which Toastmasters is great for. And then I realized that impromptu speaking, being put on the spot and asked to answer a question, that was not uh, as developed as I wanted it to be. And that's why I it, went and said about improv. It's a separate skill. Yes, it, it, it is a separate skill. One thing is to, to do a monologue on stage, which is very well rehearsed and prepared for. And the other one, it's what we call in Toastmasters table topics in some, in some of the mm -hmm. clubs. Yeah, for people who, who, do, who don't know, uh, table topics is when you are asked a question or like a given a situation and you just have to go with that, whatever, for one, one or two minutes, you just speak. So Elaine, uh, question, what, are, what would you say to people who are completely introverted, who are so not comfortable in their own skill, uh, skin, to go, but, but yet uh, the work environment that they're in, or if they are trying to build a business right now, especially we're in a situation when people, a lot of people are out of jobs and they, they are trying to pursue something else and yet this fear of being seen on screen uh, now it's on screen but then um, when when the shelter in place is over they will be going out there speaking to real human beings right it's even even more scary uh, what would you say to them what are the three maybe things or maybe four maybe I don't know I don't want to put the number but what are the most important things that you can advise them with how to start three is a great number Zana so we'll go with three so okay. introverts introverts I think introverts it's a behavioral style and it's perhaps misunderstood but you know First off, in Silicon Valley here, it's very common. And I think for some people, shelter in place was like uh, not a big change. In fact, it was like, woo, even more of what I love. <laughs> social distancing, though, becoming social isolation is, is dangerous. It, it's not a road you want to go down. You want to keep the connections with people because business is relationships. You probably... Uh, right, I'm probably talking to this preaching to the choir here with you, but so how can we speak up and use our voice, find our voice, use our voice, and then feel confident about using it, even though we're an introvert and it doesn't feel comfortable? Well, guess what? Even for extroverts, it's difficult to pick up the phone and make calls. It, it's it's um, it's a skill though, and you can develop it. And even if it's not your innate style, even if you don't feel you were born to it, you can still turn it on when you need to and then turn it off when you need to. There's a lot of famous people who you might be surprised to know are introverts and uh, they function, they do what they need to do and then they go offline and recharge. So um, introverts, what you need to know about public speaking is that you need it. It's a critical life skill to be able to get what's in your brain out of your mouth in a cogent, clear, impactful way. And that is when, when I, in personally, when I felt like I couldn't do it, when I felt like I was tired of being the deer in the headlights, when I felt like even in a simple situation, when I was asked to open my mouth and say something that made sense, I would flush completely red and get nervous and I was just sick of that. I said, well, how can I fix this? And finding a safe support of atmosphere like Toastmasters was the way to do it. So tip one, find a safe, first, actually tip one, let's back it up. You have to have the desire to do it. Have the desire to find a place that will help you, that will find help. So you need to first desire to learn to use your voice. Second, find a safe supported place like Toastmasters to do it or a coach or a mm -hmm. class. Mm -hmm. Someplace, Toastmasters is great because it has, it's a very low investment and it's ongoing. Learn by doing ongoing support. And mm -hmm. it's virtual now. It's virtual yeah. now, it's yeah. everywhere in the world. 
any time yeah. of day. Even if you want to do it at 3 a.m. California time, you can find a, another club in another country that's running a meeting. So very safe, supportive, positive people. Mm -hmm. And um, third, like I've been saying, it's a skill. It's something you learn to do. And once you learn to do it and master it, it's a tool you can use for the rest of your life. So what I would say to introverts is just have the acknowledge that it's a tool and, and start figuring out how to use it. So for the very, that was very helpful. Uh, as, as Toastmasters, I agree, a very, very loving, safe environment in which you can just simply start speaking. If you're not sure what to say, there's a lot of people who want to say something, but they don't know what. And they, they are, now there is another fear come, comes in, which is the fear of being judged. And uh, it's on top of the fear of being seen, now it's the fear of being judged. And I think uh, what you said, like Toastmaster is a safety container <clears throat> for a lot of people could be a great place to start. Uh, what is the first, first, like if you're really, really, really in fear, the first, like before they even say, uh, let's say they're not joining Toastmasters because it's another group of people, although mm -hmm. we really strongly recommend it, uh, but it's another group of people. But what if they want to um, do uh, Facebook Live, for example, or record a video? And um, what would you say to these people? Mm -hmm. Like on screen time. Right, on screen time. Well, it, it has a different type of feel, a different technical needs as far as sound and video and your the environment that you're recording in. But I, I think Izana, either on the Zoom here or in person, one-to-one, -one, one to many, wherever you are, the first thing to know is it's really not about you, the speaker. It's really not at all about you. It's about the audience that you're speaking to. What are they thinking? When they see you, what are they looking at? What are they looking at behind you? What are they hearing you say? Do they understand you? What is their thought process? Are you even interesting to them? It's really about the audience to, to connect and to get what is, like I said, out your mouth is half of it, but then to make it so you're interesting and impactful, really to focus on what is your audience? Who is your audience? Are they interested in what you're hearing? How can you make it more interesting? How can you really be transparent and really connect from the heart to talk to them? That's where you start. And when you think about them, you're taking the focus off yourself. And that's when you can start feeling more confident. It eases you up. And also as we, uh, would you recommend talking to nobody like to everyone or imagine there's a there's a great technique imagine that you're talking to just one person yeah exactly. uh, what like from your career because you're a speaking coach also so what would you right. what what do you usually teach uh your right students? so exactly I, I subscribe to what you just said so you're speaking as if a, a, a speech is not a conversation but it needs to sound conversational as my coach Patricia Fripp loves to say. So that's where you have, you speak to one person, but you look to all. So you're speaking as if you're speaking to one person. It's not, hey, all of you, how are y'all doing? It's, how are you doing? So you're speaking as if it's one person, but when you're in front of a crowd, you're looking obviously to all of them. You're not just staring at one person and, and saying this. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's, a, that's actually a very powerful technique, Zana. Yeah, I, I I agree. I mean, it helped me. And of course, you speak to, you kind of speak to millions, uh, but you're always speaking to, in your mind, you're speaking to one person who has a name, which is, for me, it's very, very important, who has a name, who has a specific traits of character, and you know that you want, like, your message or whatever you are sharing with that person is actually relevant to that specific person. And it doesn't matter... Uh, we're not speaking, it's like in marketing. When we are marketing to everyone, we're marketing to no one. Say mm -hmm. we're speaking. If we're speaking to everyone, we're speaking to no one. It's a, like, who are we speaking to? Exactly. And I 
yeah i totally i totally agree okay anything uh any other like secret uh things that you usually don't talk about when you when you are coaching people to speak and what makes a presentation successful presentation specifically for introverts people who are it's not their it's not their nature um, to just to be in front of people. For me, it's it comes very easy. I've been on stage all my life, right? So I am an extrovert. I'm kind of a mixture right now, but I used to be more outside, though. Yeah, yeah. Your story is how shy you were. Yeah. <laughs> yes, uh, but but you, I still want to get in a little bit more into into your your personal story because people relate, like they can relate to you uh, more. I know a little bit more about that because I, I heard your story before. Uh, but if you could, if you could just throw a little bit of light on how your personal transition of being so shy and then little by little maybe a specific example when you had your first breakthrough oh it's not as scary as i thought like what was that moment maybe and uh again it's like two-folded question and and the second one what i started with like when you're coaching what or what do you tell specifically to people people like you or people who are not natural as speakers like what what are the secrets of easing it up like really is it is it the body exercises is it the, the breathing uh specifics mm -hmm. well it's it's not a really a one size fits all i would say when it comes to what's the secret the secret is to want it and then to go after it and not, not anything get in your way that's how i did it and I didn't want it for so long because I, I grew up uh, between two brothers. And um, so other people were doing the speaking for me. And I was really happy with a book. I have some books. I brought my books here because I love books. I have so many books. And uh, I was just really happy. Here. Uh -huh. Yeah, Friday night for me was hanging out with a book, a mystery book preferably. And if it was a rainy night, even better. I mean, I grew up in Ohio where it rained in the summer and that was happy for me. And uh, so um, very much an introvert that way. I had friends, but just a few. It wasn't like I was looking to be the life of the party. Now, as I progressed, I was um, a bookworm, bookworm and a good student. And I had a desire to excel. And I, I still love learning, right? And Zana, you love learning. And I'm I, sure a lot of people, if you're watching this, you probably love learning. So part of that is learning new skills and um, overcoming the challenges. Challenge, I'm definitely challenge motivated. So there was a speech contest that I entered in high school. Mm -hmm. That speech contest, I thought I was going to crush it. I'd been through the Dale Carnegie course and public relations and human speaking for high school students because I was in junior achievement. I, I had, you know, I was all about achieving and learning. And uh, long story short, I bombed and I let it tell me a story. I let it tell me a story that I wasn't a good speaker, that no one wanted to hear me and that the best thing to do to never feel this pain again was to just keep my mouth shut. That was in high school. Yeah, that was in high school. And therefore, whenever that kind of uncomfortable situation started to raise its head in my life, I would run from it. And I regret now uh, not facing that head on and finding help and finding a coach and finding someone who could say, hey, this happens to everyone. Everyone bombs. That's part of life. Congratulations. You've gotten over that hurdle now. How do we solve it? and then apply the, the persistence and the, the challenge motivation that I naturally had to solve that problem. However, for literally almost 20 years, I just let that story play in my head that I wasn't a good public speaker, that I shouldn't speak up, that I really had nothing that anyone wanted to say, mm -hmm. anyone wanted to hear to say to them. Until finally, I saw promotions passing me by. I, I felt just, 
that I couldn't get over this hurdle and I really didn't like how it felt. So finally, I changed jobs and the first day, Raul Roca leaned across the table at our group lunch and said, Elaine, welcome to Xilinx. There's a Toastmasters club here. And so before I even could think, I said, Raul, I'm joining. And I went to the next meeting. Uh, it was a great club. They had people surrounding me, making sure I made it to the first meeting, making sure I signed up. And then um, the first time I gave a table topic there, which is like you said, they asked me a question. I don't remember the question, but it required me to stand up and walk to the front of the room and turn and face. I, it was like 12 people. It wasn't a big crowd, but it was big enough. I didn't know these people. And then I had to make words come out of my mouth and speak for at least 30 seconds before I could sit down. And just doing that, and then at the end, at Toastmasters love to clap. They clap because it yeah, shows support. Yeah. You could fall <laughs> on your face. You could, you could do- Yeah, and everybody would, would be cheering. They will, they will clap because you're showing the effort. And so that's what they did. And that changed my whole life because- Yes. Yes, and now and then and then you became you you won the competition, the district competition as an evaluator. Right so two, now. two years ago, uh, was it two years ago? Oh, it was wonder. last year, last May, okay. May, May 2019. So you know that was me as a baby Toastmaster at Xilinx in um, that was 1999, and um, so my path through Toastmasters, I always loved analyzing speeches and giving people specific feedback to help and listening to that. I just comes naturally to me the analytic kind of mindset. So yeah. I always did well in this event called speech evaluation which is where you listen to a speech and then uh, compile something positive that went well and then a specific thing to improve on, a specific skill or some, something to improve on and then to couch it in positive specific language. So that is something I've really enjoyed ever since I joined Toastmasters in 1999. And there's a number of reasons, but I held myself back. I managed to lose every contest possible in every possible way. And then finally though, in 2019, <laughs> I yeah. was privileged to win the district 101 speech evaluation contest. And so, that was something I never would have guessed I could do when I joined. Like I said, it was frightening for me just to give a table time. That and I was actually present at that at that conference, and it actually inspired me to continue with Toastmasters and also go compete as a speaker, not as an as an evaluator. And I did it this year. But the point is that Elaine, I just want to I just want to emphasize that you are incredible and at um, deconstructing and uh, reverse engineering the speech and your comments. I'm always looking forward to your evaluation specifically because they're very specific, they're very practical and it's something that the person can take and apply, take and apply. And what from your story, thank you so much for sharing that. Of what really stands out and I want everybody to hear it. We hear those stories every time, but how many people do you know who actually persevere I don't, I know I can literally count on my fingers. Mm -hmm. um, Elaine, it took you how many years? Like a lot of years. So you, you just never gave years. up? Yeah. Yeah, 20 I'm years. At, just 20 I am, years pers just I am deter I'm persevering. When I determine to do it, I can persevere. But like, it, it just took, I got to the point where I said, let's figure this out. And I got past I got to the one level of the competition that had kept me back for so long and then boom ever get to that point that's when the real learning happens when you go into the unknown and I I called up two uh, Toastmasters who had won the contest who I admired who I liked their style they told me everything I needed to know everything and then mm -hmm. I applied it right I mean to know but so I had all that experience from my past and then this new knowledge, and then the determination to apply it, to practice, and to make it happen. And I learned a lot from those two weeks of preparation for the for the di district contest. 
Yes, yes. And I just want to say that, first of all, uh, the message here for everybody who is listening, and thank you so much. I can see Wendy and Giselle, and uh, I don't know how to pronounce, uh, I don't know the names, but Molito, Moito. Um, I'm sorry if I butchered your name. I didn't do it. <laughs> I didn't do it on purpose. But thank you so much for joining us live today. And uh, this is a conversation with Elaine Lang. She is a distinguished Toastmaster, a coach, and uh, and a beautiful human being, uh, also world class, uh, world class speaking coach. Mm -hmm. So we are talking about how being an introvert really um, uh, is not a, a reason, the reason for you not to do any public speaking. And mm -hmm. Elaine's story is a, is a true, like living proof that you can actually do it if you put the time and effort and the desire that comes first that Elaine was talking about. Mm -hmm. um, I'm also glad, and I want to emphasize it that what was something that almost broke you this high school experience when you decided to shut up for for 20 for 20 years no not almost. for 20 years it almost was, almost yeah. for 20 years it, a lot of us are doing that i mean i can tell stories about myself which i'm not going to go into today i might share my stories but in tea time with shana uh, that you that I do occasionally, and uh, but but what I want to want to want to say, Elaine, I'm so glad that this first experience that was the stopper at the beginning, then when you circled back many years later, then it wouldn't you wouldn't have the same narrative inside your head about how bad you were as a speaker, and you kind of turned the things around. That's beautiful, but what I want to uh, transition into is you said that you are basically a nerd right in the best sense of it and you're a bookworm and I know that you you love books I sometimes read the books that you recommended because that's my recent habit I only listen to people I don't buy just random books anymore um, could you please share some some books that have shaped you uh, whether personally or professionally along the way and mm -hmm. why you okay well i did i brought them right here and i'll hold them up next to me should i hold uh, this side is better right okay yeah so, uh, yeah even closer a little bit so that we can even see the closer time. okay so this is my little travel bible can you see how tiny it is it's still kind of heavy but this is, uh, the Bible is, I'm a Christian and I was born and well, raised a Christian. So I, and I still am a practicing Christian. So the Bible said, you asked me what my values are, the golden rule, do unto others what you would have them do unto you, the 10 commandments, that's, that's it. And I brought this one because see, I've written down all the places I've traveled in the fly leaf because before phones, and now there's like a couple apps. You can get a Bible on an app, no problem. I used to take this in my backpack and um, carry it. So that's I'm so glad. That's a it, little it, Bible. Can I, can I insert something right here? It's just I'm so glad you mentioned that. Uh, you this golden rule. I just released recently uh, the Kids City, and one of the one of the songs uh, is called Grandma's Wisdom, and mm -hmm. it's all about the golden rule. Because in the first chorus, uh, it says, uh, "Do to others what you'd like them to do to you." then give to others what you'd like them to give to you mm. and then the third be to others what you'd like them to be to you i just i'm so glad that you mentioned that golden it would be thing. great if everybody was doing that today everywhere well i i've been thinking about that <laughs> i did a story on absolutely mm. with all the recent events that are happening yes. for all of us we just want to go back to basics right of being a human being all right That's thank incredible. you what's another one all right, now this book is the book I used to get out of the library the most in Euclid, Ohio. And um, it's called Richard Halliburton's Complete Book of Marvels. Book of Marvels, wow. Can you see the world map behind me? Yes, My I was- My husband and I, yeah, it's full of pens. My husband and I love to travel. And the travel bug was, I believe, instilled in me back here because in when I grew up, we just didn't have, the funding to go anywhere 
I mean, going to Michigan was a big deal. <laughs> going to Indiana, woo, New York, Pennsylvania. Um, so this book took me all around the world and, and uh, planted the seeds that now I am making, I'm, we make the list and we go see it. So wow. I love, I love that so book. Beautiful. And I, by the way, uh, mm -hmm. yes. Can I just mention one thing, uh, guys, the list of recommended books by Elaine, what she's showing right now on Facebook page, uh, Hummingbird Academy today, where we, uh, today, where we're live now, we are also live on Instagram guys. The, the list is going to be underneath the video on Hummingbird Academy today on Facebook. <clears throat> yes, I just want I want you to know that you can have access to those books. I would love to get a copy of this really? book of marvels. I didn't know okay. about it. It's out of print, so it's they're old copies, but they're they're on Amazon. They're on Amazon. Oh, um, am I going too slow? Or are we going okay? Faster? No, no, no. Okay. No, you're, you're fine. Next books. Here we go. Dale Carnegie classics. Yes. How to win How friends. To... How to stop worrying and start living. And these books were given to me in high school and you can't tell, but they're really old and they're full of highlighters and they're yellow, but I love these books. And this is where I started to get a clue about human relations, about life skills, critical life skills. Uh, I learned it because I was in a, um, a program called Junior Achievement and they gave scholarships to kids to go to the Dale Carnegie course in public relations and speaking and human relations of public speaking. And um, after going through that, that's where I got the confidence to even go to the speech contest where I still had a lot to learn, but I wasn't ready for the lesson yet. So these books are classics and they started that, down, me down that path. Beautiful. Okay, Norman Vincent Peale, I know he's got power of positive thinking, but this is the one that I read first. You can if you think you can. So just cultivating yeah. positiveness. And that's it, and it circles back. It circles back to the title of our show today of this episode with you, right? If it's for oh, the wow. introverts who think they can't. So if you think you can't, you're right. If you that's think right. you can, you're right too. So true. <laughs> so true. To have the desire to blast through the obstacles to overcome it. It starts. Everything starts up here. Everything. Up here. All right. Got two more. These are these motivated me more recently. This is Daniel Pink to sell as human. I don't know this one. So what is what stands out for you? For, for you in this that, is where in this I started to realize that I could use improv in a more applied way, speaking and coaching and consulting. Because what what I didn't say about the district contest and winning it, there's a huge improvisational element to speech evaluation, because you don't have very long to come up with the answers. You need to be really great at listening and observing the speaker and catching everything you can, and then putting together a short specific speech and then getting up and presenting it in a clear and cogent way. And once, like last year with the district contest, once I realized that it was anal my analytic ability plus my improv background, boom, it, it just came together and I had confidence out the roof. So that book helped me see it, life is about sales, of course, but improv helps you apply to life. So that's, it turned on the light for me there. That was a few years ago. Yeah. Okay. And now finally, this is a great little book, Steal Like an Artist, Austin Kleon. I don't know these books. Oh my gosh, there's a lot. My, yeah, my library is going to be bigger Great. by tonight. He's got several uh, books out now, but um, here we go. It's Start Copying. And um, here, there you go. Start Copying. Mm -hmm. When you're starting a business, when you're starting anything, look at the masters, look at who's doing something you admire and copy them. Just copy them because it's going to be you. That's how you find your voice, how you find your style, how you find what you excel at. So, uh, pride held me back. There's another great quote um, by a Dave Ramsey personality, and um, let me quote him Ken Coleman is his name. And this is the quote Fear, doubt, and pride hold us back from our progress. 
Mm -hmm. Fear, uh, what'll happen? What'll I become? What if I succeed? Doubt, what? I don't think I can do it. I don't think I have the ability. Things won't happen for me. Everyone else can do it, but I can't, the doubt. And then pride, which really held me back was, well, I should know this already. And if I go ask someone for help, they're gonna look at me and think, mm, look at her. She should know this already. She's not as smart as I thought she was. It takes humility to ask for help. And when you do, yeah. that's when you really have to open yourself to be to the beginner's mindset, to being like a child, if you will, in many ways, but to, to open your mind and to accept the help. So um, that's once huge. Yeah. So once I realized that other people had the answers I needed and then to go have the humility to approach them and ask for the help, that's mm -hmm. when things really happened. Yeah. Just ask for help. That's another. What a beautiful, beautiful um, message to everybody who is listening and especially for people who are uncomfortable getting putting your messages out there, putting yourself in front of camera and whatever whatever else it might involve. It's a process, right? But really it's very, it boils down to what Elaine just said. Uh, ask for help if you need it. Uh, it doesn't have to be, uh, there's a lot of information on YouTube. There's a lot of coaches like, like Elaine. By the way, Elaine, where can we find you? What's the easiest way? Go to my website, elainelung.com, and my phone number is right there. And you can also contact me, elaine, at elainelung.com. And it's going to be, uh, by the if way, the shy. link. To, yeah, if, you, <laughs> if you're shy, exactly. Go to, elaine, go to Elaine's website if you're shy and find her phone number. And if you're shy, just send her an email. If you have questions, and she'll be happy to yeah, Happy to them. ask. Because it's a risk, isn't it, Zana? I mean, the first time you did this, interviewing people on Facebook Live, right? Scary. It's a risk to go on camera. It's a risk to open your mouth and try to say something to someone else. But the beauty is, is that it's a muscle you build. Practice does make you better. And um, when, you, when you improvise, when you add those improv skills into it, which you can take a class, by the way, those schools that um, are in my bio are great places to start. Uh, or come to the Silicon Valley Improv Masters Toastmasters Club. That's great. Um, okay. Once you start developing that muscle and start getting comfortable with the fact that you can mess up and your head doesn't explode, <laughs> that the, here. the floor doesn't open, um, and then you start getting that confidence and it comes out on stage. It, if things go wrong and you freeze, the audience is not comfortable for you. But if things go wrong and you say, oh, <laughs> look at me, I made a mistake, yay, okay, let's keep going forward. The audience is like, okay, let's keep going forward. And that's the kind of confidence you wanna develop on stage. Absolutely, absolutely, yes. Wow, there's a ton of great information. I hope it's yeah. been very valuable for you guys. If you have any comments, questions, just let us know if it brought value to you because we want to over deliver every single time on the program. And I just want to remind you that you've been listening and watching to Dream Big, Big with Jana, inspiring you to reignite, refire, and refuel your life. And my special guest today on the show was Elaine Lung, the amazing Elaine Lung. Thank so you, thank Zana. you so much. Yeah, thank you, Elaine, for uh, for being here. Any last piece of wisdom? Um, if yes, yeah. yes. If, I okay. do, and I really want to get to this. You said, so what's your favorite quote? I gave you that Ken Coleman quote. That resonated to me huge. But look, do you see what that says? Succeed anyway. Right. I, I just took that. a workshop with Mike Rayburn, who is a virtuoso guitarist, a keynote speaker. And I have these on post-its all over my house now because we all need inspiration. And out of that workshop, it was with a bunch of realtors, <laughs> if you can imagine. And it's, things are hard right now. They're hard for everyone. This is went to zero. Mike Rayburn's, I mean, you can't go give a keynote in front of an audience anymore. Everything's virtual. So yeah, COVID happened. Yeah, there are riots. Yeah, there's curfew. Succeed anyway. 
I love it. Guys, with that, we're going to say until next time and succeed anyway and stay inspired and refuel and just be, it's just yourself. be and keep moving, keep going. Um, all right. Thank you so much. Thank you, Elaine. That was incredible. And thank you, everybody, for being with us. We would love to know what, how it was received by you. Okay. Any questions, ask me or Elaine on Facebook, on Instagram. We are on all platforms. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Let me... Bye. Okay. So I'm going to, we're going to.